Welcome to the latest episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm your host, Glenn Simon, Product Marketing Manager for vSphere. In this series, we bring VMware experts to talk about vSphere as well as related technologies. In today's episode, we're going to talk more about the latest release of vSphere Update 2 and how it can help you supercharge the performance of your most demanding applications. Our expert today is Phelan O'Leary, Technical Marketing Architect for vSphere. Welcome, Phelan. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks for having me. I can't believe it's that time again to talk about the next update in vSphere. It feels like only yesterday we were talking about update one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Every six months or so, we kind of, you know, we're, yeah. we're busy at work. Um, and this time we've got uh, a lot of interesting things to talk about around performance. So, so when it comes to, before we dive into the actual enhancements, uh, when it comes to performance uh, of your, of those workloads, what, um, what do you, what are sort of the big problems that we're trying to solve and kind of drives, uh, drives the enhancements that we've chosen to to work on. Yeah. So, you know, AI ML is, you know, the, the hot topic uh, these days, and we're trying to make it so that vSphere gives you the best bang for your buck and improve the performance for those small AI workloads, but also the larger, la large language model workloads as well. And, you know, give you the best performance or the most performance you can from the resources you have, optimizing that hardware, optimizing those GPUs that you got and making the latest acceleration technologies available and easy to use, easy to deploy, easy to take advantage of, you know, bringing that to more and more environments. Makes sense. So let's let's talk about those enhancements in, in update two. So uh, just at a high level, you know, what would be, you know, what's kind of the, the from your perspective, the highlights of, uh, of this release from a performance standpoint? Yeah, so we're bringing, you know, with, with, with a lot of vSphere releases, we often try and push the boundary of the maximum number of CPUs or the maximum number of memory. And we're doing that with GPUs now this time around with vSphere 8 Update 2 and adding capacity for even more GPUs per virtual machine. And because we're bringing more and more GPUs to virtual machines, we're also improving DRS to make it more aware, more intelligent and you know, place VMs better when they've got GPU resources. And we haven't forgotten about DPUs either. We're expanding our DPU support to include additional vendors, um, you know, from, from additional hardware partners as well. Okay, and for those of you who are maybe new to the DPU term, that's short for data processing units. We talked, we kind of uh, launched support for that at uh, vSphere 8. Um, I guess about a year, right? It's been a year, geez. Yeah, almost a year. year. Years yep. flown by. All right, well, let's dive into each one of those in a little more detail. So first, um, let's talk about more GPUs for your VMs. Yeah, so I think in vSphere Update 1, we had support for eight vGPUs per virtual machine. We're doubling that with, with 8 Update 2. So you can have up to 16 vGPUs per virtual machine. And this will depend on the underlying physical GPU hardware as well. The, you know, different hardware supports a maximum of different vGPUs. But if you've got support for up to 16 vGPUs per virtual machine, that allows you to run those larger AI workloads, run those large language models, you know, everything generative AI, it's all consuming GPU resources. So we can now build VMs, those big monster VMs to, to run those very high computational workloads as well in vSphere 8 Update 2. And I guess uh, if if it's if the limit is now moved up to 16 vGPUs, virtual GPUs, then I guess by uh, association or I don't know the transitive property or something, that means that from a physical GPU standpoint, you could, I guess in the extreme case, assign as many as 16 physical GPUs to a VM. Do I have that right? It, it, exactly. Yeah, you can do a, a either a time sliced. Uh, I think it's called where you're sharing a, a one physical GPU to much multiple virtual machines. But you can also pass through an entire GPU to a virtual machine as well, so that it has exclusive access. So you can have up to 16 physical GPUs as well assigned to a single virtual machine. Okay. And so with the advent of additional vGPUs, you know, they're becoming more and more popular, they're becoming more common, we needed to make DRS better at placing those okay. virtual machines. Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, so in the, in the past, DRS really didn't consider vGPUs when it was making placement decisions, and it didn't actually support 
load balancing those, those GPUs, VMs using vMotion. We're solving that problem with vSpray update too. DRS is going to be very clever at placing GPU VMs, making sure it optimally places those VMs to take advantage of your GPU hardware. But in, event, in instances where there is available GPU hardware, but maybe there's not enough space on one individual host, DRS is now clever enough to migrate a, a, another VM, another smaller GPU enabled VM to make space for that larger VM, to avoid interruptions to the workflows, to avoid interruptions to you know, deploying those large language model workloads that you wanna do. So it makes DRS uh, much more intelligent we also have what we call what we're calling a quality of service uh, value as well, and this is to do with the vMotion stun time. So that's one reason why vMotions um, in the past were not supported with vGPU VMs was that the stun time was too excessive. Now we've made vMotion, you know much, much better in, in, in recent releases, and we support vMotions for vGPU-enabled VMs. But we can now introduce this maximum tolerated stun time value to allow administrators to define what is the maximum stun in seconds that they will tolerate for their workloads. For example, if a vGPU VM takes uh, four seconds to stun, that might be tolerable, and we can allow that. Or if the VM might take 20 seconds, that might exceed the maximum configured for this environment, and the administrator can disallow those automatic load balance migrations from occurring. So it gives you a, a little bit of a, a quality of service around your GPU VMs and the vMotion activities associated with DRS. Okay, so it sounds like for a given number of GPUs or a given amount of resource that I have at my command, I'm maybe with, with update two, I'm gonna be able to get maybe a little more performance uh, for my GPU or AI based workloads and maybe uh, maybe some a little better resilience as well. Yeah, better better consumption of the underlying hardware would really how I would uh, how I would okay. frame it. We're, we're we're making smarter placement decisions. We can move free GPU VMs around to make space for larger ones. So it's just a better consumption of the underlying hardware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, better utilization. Exactly. So um, okay, sounds uh, great for of course the uh, all of this emphasis on AI and uh, and GPU uh, based uh, workloads. Uh, let's shift gears a little and talk briefly about uh, data protect uh, data processing units DPUs. So what if we what are we doing there? Yeah, so we launched uh, our support for DPUs with the initial release of vSpray, and we had a couple of vendors on board. Since we last spoke, and uh, since vSpray update one, we've added support for for systems from Fujitsu and systems from Lenovo. So you now should be able to procure DPU ready systems from both of those vendors, in addition to Dell, HPE, and um, who am I missing? Dell, HPE, and uh... Gosh. I think that's it. Dell HP. Oh, yes. That's Lenovo, it. Yeah, Dell, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, you know, we're expanding that ecosystem all the time. We're going to add, you know, if, if there's additional vendors want to come in and certify their systems with us, we're always happy to accept more vendors and more configurations. Okay. So all the benefits that we talked about when we launched vSphere 8 around data processing units, DPUs in terms of being able to offload uh, off, offload processing from the CPU to these these accelerators. Uh, now we're basically expanding the ecosystem, being able to exactly. support more systems. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward, but um, sounds great. All right, so um, that, that um, is there anything else that um, you wanted to touch on from a performance standpoint in update two? Uh, I, I guess the only other thing would be with uh, this update, we're also introducing an additional hardware version. So we're up to virtual machine hardware version 21. Uh, that's going to be needed to take advantage of those 16 vGPUs, but it also brings uh, scalability improvements in the area of uh, NVMe disks for virtual machines. Um, up to 256 uh, NVMe disks per virtual machine is now available with hardware version 21. Okay. All right. Well, sounds good. Uh, well, before we wrap, is there um, where else, um, you know, for anybody who's interested in learning more about the performance enhancements in Update 2, where, uh, where do you suggest people go? 
Uh, first port of call would be to the tech zone. Uh, there you'll find a bunch of resources, including videos, blogs, articles, simulations, you name it. Uh, we hopefully have it um, for everything that's coming uh, in vSphere 8 update too. So keep an eye out there and check back often. You know, we don't launch everything uh, on day zero. We'll you know, we'll periodically update the, the content uh, with new new blogs, new videos as time goes on. Okay. And, uh, and, and of course, the YouTube channel, which is, yes. is probably where you're seeing this, uh, this break room chat. All right, well, that sounds great. Um, and, and by the way, we will include links to uh, what Phelan just mentioned as far as the tech zone and the YouTube channel um, for, uh, for this content uh, in the description for this video so you can um, continue uh, your, uh, uh, your journey. Um, and with that, we've come to the end of this break room chat episode. Thanks, Phelan, for joining Thank us you. today. Thanks for having me. If you liked this episode, please join us next time for another episode of Break Room Chats. This is your host, Glenn Simon, signing off for now. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.